and welcome to a new Light Bite series on horticulture LED lighting. In the first part, plants and lighting, we will talk about how plants see light and how different aspects of a light recipe can help to optimize horticultural lighting for plant growth. This part will be presented to you by Thijs van den Berg, plant specialist, city farming at Philips Horticulture. Welcome everyone to the first webinar about light in plant growth. I am Thijs van den Berg, a plant specialist at Philips Horticulture LED Solutions. For Philips, I work at the Growy Center for City Farming, where we develop growth recipes for a range of crops. By tweaking light and growing conditions, we aim to efficiently grow crops which are rich in vitamins and flavors. In the following 15 to 20 minutes, we will talk about the relation between light and plant growth. We will pay particular attention to the following four topics. First, first of all, we will explain what is a light and how plants use light for growth. We will talk about what is an efficient lighting system and why we use LEDs instead of high pressure sodium lamps. Finally, we will explain what constitutes a light recipe and how a light recipe is a key component of a growth recipe. Light is electromagnetic radiation. Only a small part of the spectrum is visible, mostly between 380 and 780 nanometers. Light has many colors, which are defined by their wavelength. Commonly, we think of light as energy-containing particles, so-called photons. These are the elementary particles, or quanta, of light. We humans differ from plants with regard to our sensitivity to light. While the human eye is particularly sensitive to green light, plants have a much broader sensitivity and photosynthesis is most efficient with blue and red light. Because of our comparative insensitivity to blue and red light, we often quantify light using lux or lumen. This, however, is not the most appropriate way to measure light and from a scientific perspective, we prefer to express light in micromoles per square meter per second. This gives the number of incoming photons with a wavelength between 4 and 700 nanometers. This is often referred to as the photosynthetically active radiation or PAR. Plants need light for photosynthesis. Sugars that are formed through this process are used for maintenance and growth. In photosynthesis, energy from photons are stored in plant pigments. This energy is used to produce sugars from carbon dioxide and water, while oxygen is released. Light contains a lot of information, for example, on the time of the day, the progressing of the season or the presence of competitors. Through evolution, plants have developed mechanisms to react to such information. And therefore, light can be used to steer plant development, for example, morphology, the structure of a plant. When we wish to steer plant development, we can alter the light intensity. The sum of light over time, the time across we provide the light, the spectrum or the direction of the light. Throughout the life cycle of a plant, light can have different effects on plant growth. From the moment of germination, light determines growth, the direction of growth, branching and flowering. These plant processes are mediated by a large number of so-called photoreceptors. Some of the reactions of plant, plants to light are generic. Others depend heavily on the plant family or even the cultivar. UV light often triggers defense mechanisms in plants. It leads to pigment accumulation and the buildup of tastes and aromas. Blue light inhibits stretching and stimulates stomatal opening, whereas green light counterfeits such effects. Red light penetrates easily through leaves and hence increases when plants are overgrown. Plants react to this by stretching their petioles and tend to flower earlier. The relative proportion between red and far red light is also an important factor. High red to far red ratios enhance seedling growth and stretching. Here are some examples of reactions of plants to light. 
Monochromatic light often leads to stunted growth and in the long run plant death. Some blue light is needed besides red light to grow healthy plants. Light can also be used to help color lettuce. Here on the left you see a head of lettuce that was grown in a greenhouse in the Netherlands under low light intensities in winter. Addition of blue light rapidly leads to red coloration. Photosynthesis increases with light intensity. At high light levels, however, it becomes saturated as carbon dioxide becomes limiting. Different species react differently to light. Some plants show low maximum photosynthetic rates, whereas in others, the point where carbon dioxide starts to limit photosynthesis may occur at a much later stage. Here you see a graph with the average light intensities in a greenhouse in the Netherlands throughout the year. In red you see hours during the day where light intensities are too high for optimal photosynthesis. Blue indicates hours when light is too low. From this it becomes immediately apparent that light conditions are hardly ever optimal. Either light intensities are too low or they are too high. This means that growers will want to use supplemental lighting during parts of the day while they will have to use shading screens during others. In order to maximize growth we need efficient lighting systems. Efficient lighting first of all consists of a fixture with a high conversion efficiency. It needs to efficiently transform electrical energy into photons. Light losses need to be minimized and we need to provide an efficient spectrum. Finally, lights that have a long lifetime and low service requirements are needed to make the lighting system as efficiently as possible. The efficiency of a light source depends for a large part on the spectrum provided. Because the energy of a photon is inversely proportional to the wavelength, more energy is required to create a blue photon when compared to a red photon. The maximum efficacy of a blue LED is 3.6 micromoles per joule, whereas 5.5 micromoles of red light can be produced from the same amount of electrical energy. LEDs provide a number of benefits when compared to traditional high-pressure sodium lamps. LEDs provide the same amount of light for 40% less energy. Lamps do not need any startup time. They provide uniform lighting and produce no infrared radiation. Also, because the spectrum can be tuned to the crop, product quality can be enhanced. This last point about this choice of spectrum is illustrated in the panels below, where we compare spectral signatures from natural daylight in the upper left panel and a HPS lamp on the top right. The bottom two panels show spectral signatures for LED fittings with blue and deep red and high blue, white, deep red and far red. When developing a light recipe, all starts with the formulation of the wished for plant characteristics. In some plants, compactness is appreciated, whereas in others, abundant and early flowering is a major selling point. Again, in other species, high antioxidant levels can be an important argument for a premium selling price. Depending on such a formulation, a light recipe can be developed that is optimal for the crop. Finally, optimal plant growth is much more than just a lighting plan. Plant growth is determined by a whole range of other parameters like nutrients, water, substrate and climate. A grower will always consider all of these factors. A light recipe will therefore always be a part of the growth recipe.